Sheikh, what do you do for a living? Alhamdulillah for the name of Islam, which has told us that we can indeed have a balanced life between the two extremes of just greed and greed and greed and acquiring without any rules and regulation yeah. or not having any property whatsoever. There was a quote, you know, uh, a man said that you can't help the poor by being one of them. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh everyone. Welcome to the Ilmfi podcast. My name is Shabir Hassan and I've been waiting to say these words for a long, long time because uh, we've been away for a while and uh, I'm super excited, alhamdulillah, to be back. New year, new studio, new everything really, inshallah. And hopefully uh, we've got more and more exciting guests for you. In today's episode, uh, we are joined by uh, someone who's an imam, a scholar, a teacher, an entrepreneur, uh, Sheikh Qazi Ashkur Rahman. Um, and uh, it was a really exciting episode. We discussed things from entrepreneurship in Islam to uh, halal income, uh, what to avoid, what to look out for, uh, experiences as an imam and so much more. So yeah, enjoy this episode, inshallah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, Sheikh Ashik, how are you? Alaikum wassalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, I'm fine, how are you? Alhamdulillah, very, very well. And uh, we, we are um, going to get straight into it, but actually I just want to remind you that and, and remind the viewers that we have had you on the podcast before. And you know what? I was checking when it was. Do, do you have any idea when, when you like last one? Four years, five, four, five yeah. years ago? Bang on, pretty much. Yeah. I, I think it was beginning of 2019. Yeah. Um, yeah. And obviously we're halfway past... Um, 2023 now, so more than four years. Wow, so time's flying, fast, flying. and I think it's overdue yeah. to have you back on. Yeah, um, yeah. And we're going to get straight into it with a quick fire. And after the quick fire, I'll ask you, I'll ask, we'll get into the discussions. Okay. So first question is uh, Egypt or London? Egypt. Egypt. How could you say that? You know, you're, you're, you're here now, you're part of the community well, it depends, here. right? Egypt is in terms of um, the, the culture, the uh, availability of scholars and teachers and educational facilities. I've gotten used to it, subhanAllah. So I, both I suppose, but recently I think Egypt, because you, when, you, when you're not in Egypt, you kind of miss yeah, it and yeah. you go back. Maybe if I was in Egypt for a long time, or say London. Yeah, yeah. Well, now it's Egypt. Okay. Um, next question is, uh, Sheikh Sudais or Sheikh Shuraim? Sudais. Really? Yes. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Shuraim. I don't know why. Okay. His last is nice. Beautiful tone, mashallah. Okay, mashallah. I, I, I would say, I would say, yeah, I think when I'm when I'm there and hearing it live, Sheikh Sudais is different. It hits he's, different. Yeah, it he's, does. He, that's a childhood memory for every single yeah, thing. Yeah. Anyone that's memorized Quran, learn Quran, Sheikh Sudais' voice. It's okay. amazing. I wasn't going to ask about the Apple Android, but apparently you've got an interesting answer. Uh, well, I've got both. You've got well, both? Yeah, I've never heard both. anyone say that. Go. Got both. You've combined between the two. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Just to avoid the differences. Well, I actually had a Samsung uh, since... Since years, just recently, a few months ago, I got yeah. Apple as well because it's got features that are, you know, helpful for social media and etc. Okay. Uh, and final one is, um, there's more of a question to be honest with you. Uh, which one is more fluent, your your Bangla or your Arabic? Are you talking about the Shuddo? Which I would you know? say Arabic is probably, I mean, if you compare it to Shuddo, then yeah. definitely Arabic. If it's Silati, then Silati, of course. It's more fluent, yeah? I think they're probably the same. But is Silati it? more because I speak it. All the time. Okay. And Arabic, alhamdulillah, is, is on a good level. Alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. And a bonus question based on that. Can you think of, uh, on the spot, a few words that are shared in both Bangla and Arabic? Oh, okay. Bangla and Arabic? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you've got some. You probably thought about this, right? Um, there's, there's, there's loads, if you think. I mean, yeah, there's loads. When you, think, when, you, when you really think deep about it, when you have some mm. time, of course, there's, there's mm. a lot. Mm. Shall I tell you the most interesting one that Go I've ahead. come across? Uh, which I never, it never clicked. You know, yeah. when it clicks, it's like, wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you know the word alada. We say alada. Alahida. Alahida. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So for those of you who don't know, alada means like separate. Yeah. And uh, yeah, in, in Arabic, same thing. Alahida, literally by yeah, itself. Yeah. Uh, any, any others that come to your mind? There, there are, there are some common ones, but I, I can't, I can't, I feel like I've spoken about it before, but I just, yeah. I just can't, it's not coming to my mind right now. Okay. It's proper random. It's too much question. on the spot. I know. <laughs> random question. It was. It was literally as I was yeah, coming. I was like, "That's a question wow. to ask." That's a question right, to there's, ask. There's, there's so many. Like, if I think of it afterwards, I'll tell you. Inshallah. Okay. All right. Inshallah. Okay. So let's get let's get into it. Yeah. Uh, lots to discuss. And my first question to you is actually a very serious question. Um, it's it's a it's a loaded question. So I hope you're ready for it. And the question is, Sheikh, um, what do you do for a living? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> um. You know, as you should do a lot 
in your life for a living. And I think we spoke about this in, in the last time I attended as well. And we spoke about a sort of um, income, sustenance, um, balancing imam, job, and et cetera. Because even back then, I was actually, alhamdulillah, bifadlillah, serving as a lead imam and khatib in one of the major mosques in, in London. Alhamdulillah, Darul Majal Masjid in Shadwell East London, which is the headquarters of Dawatul Islam UK and I, which is an organization which has been around for decades and <clears throat> has done huge works. So uh, that is there, being an imam, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, you may have interests, you may have passions which go beyond just being an imam. Maybe uh, you want to do some sort of a trade business uh, and so on. So what I do for a living is that I'm, I'm an imam and I do business. Yeah. Yes, a bit of businesses, alhamdulillah. And it's important, it's required because uh, especially with the cost of living extremely high now, mm. um, I think uh, Muslims should have the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial side, which is from the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad SAW, awesome. himself and his Sahaba. And, you know, this is this is a really important part uh, of, uh, of being, you know, financially independent, financially stable, uh, which then allows for you to do other things that you're supposed to do, like focus on your studies mm. and your ibadah and your family and uh, education and teaching and khidmah and so on. Yeah. So you know, I was asking that question, right? Because uh, yeah, we're, 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 we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna refer to it because Ilmfid shared it as well. Yeah, Ilmfid shared uh, it. The, 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 the video, <laughs> <laughs> the video for those yeah. of you who aren't aware. So there's yeah. a video where you were, uh, mashallah, driving a car, uh, a, a decent car. It's a nice and, car, uh, yeah, mashallah, mashallah. mashallah. Right. And uh, then, you know, it was your brother that asked you, what do you do for yes, a living? Yes, and you yes. mentioned, I'm an imam. <clears throat> Same answer, basically. I'm an imam, yeah. I do some business. And you recited the verse from the Quran. Yeah. And, um, you know, as as is so many things on social media, right? Short clips, short statements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can be taken very quickly out of context. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the reason why I want to address it, because this is a podcast, is a long form yes, conversation. Yes. So why not discuss it? Sure. It kind of ties in with what we're going to discuss today anyway. So why do you think, that was taken out of context then? Well, I think um, it wasn't taken out of context uh, for say 95%, like most people mm. around the world, they received it, you know, exactly how it should have been received, yeah. which is you know, with positivity uh, to show that this is Islamic. This is in the sense that, you know, Islam has, hasn't got a problem with this. You can indeed be an imam, practice a Muslim. I'm not saying, you know, I'm in, a, you know, in that sense, but, I'm, you know, we're trying to be practicing Muslims, yep. serve the community, mm -hmm. while also uh, have the luxuries of the dunya, if Allah allows for you to do so, but not be immersed in it. Because I think there is a, the whole ta'rif of zuhud, what is asceticism, what it means, what does it mean to have zuhud? Does mm -hmm. it mean to completely be poor and shredded and wore torn clothes all the time? What does it mean that you can actually own positions, but you're not necessarily emotionally uh, attached to it in that sense, that you, you can let it go if you need to. So that balance is extremely important. And so I think most people around the world, like I've, I, there was big celebrities from around the world, like I'm talking about actors, people with very huge, huge followings. Uh, they posted it saying stuff like, this is it. Mm. This is good. This is nice. You know, this is how it should be from Egypt, from Pakistan, from Morocco. And, you know, subhanAllah, I, recently I was in, in Egypt. I was in my sheikh's house. Uh, that taught me, like, uh, I, I learned Qur'an from him. Yeah. And he knew me from a long time ago. And his son, when I first met him, he was four years old. He was a baby. He used to, like, come and, you know, mm. pull his dad's beard while, he's, while I'm trying to read to him and stuff like that. He comes out and he says, oh, I saw you in a video. You're in a Porsche. <laughs> and you're reciting Qur'an. Yeah. I was like, subhanAllah, you reached up through there. And I was like, <laughs> you're trying to expose me in front of my teacher. <laughs> like, he probably knows already. But it literally reached the, so many different countries. And most people took it. Uh, positively, but some people saw negativity in it. They were basically, I hope they were being genuine. Maybe some people were being genuine. Maybe others were just intentionally trying to, just trying to troll, mm. you know, like people like trolling on Twitter and stuff like that. Uh, they're like, oh, how you're supposed to be practicing and there are people struggling financially around the world and, you know, you're exhibiting a excess amount of wealth or a, there was one, one particular word that was used like, um, I, I can't remember. There's like a, a excessive amount of wealth you're displaying, displaying it. What is the point? What are you trying to do? And etc. And so on. Um, but then I clarified, even though that was against the expertise of advisors, that you shouldn't actually engage mm. uh, with comments like that because they're often yeah. trolling you and you just give them more exposure and etc. But that's something that you obviously learn with experience and etc. But I, I did say that this is the, the intention behind this clip wasn't at all 
to say, for example, rub into people's faces, you should rub into people's faces or to make them feel bad or to, to flaunt your wealth. I, or yeah, things like that, yeah, none of that. <clears throat> it was literally what I explained, which was to show that, and and there is a there is a deeper narrative to this. You know, I mean, I don't know how much time we got, but like, as an imam, as a person who loves my deen, mm. like I love my religion, I love Allah, I love His Rasul, I love our religion so much, and I want to present it and promote it in the best way possible. Mm. And you know, Alhamdulillah, I I do have some experience in marketing and and and, and you know making things look appealing and 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 presentable. So I want to make my Islam look presentable. PR, positive PR, and managing PR is from the Sunnah, and it's you can get examples after examples. So because I love my Deen so much, and I want these young men, women, old, whoever you are, yeah. I want you to see Islam in a positive light, mm -hmm. in a world that Islam is <clears throat> repetitively being painted in a in a negative. Um, you know, uh, version or negative way. So in that, with that perspective, when I when I recorded that clip or when I had my brother record, helped me record that clip, which is, it's actually, the car is his, he paid for it, mm. but I helped him to acquire it, etc. So it's, you know, in our tradition, in our Bangladeshi tradition, you know, like, you know, if someone owns something in their family, it's like, I'm a shock lord, like it's all, <laughs> of, all of us. Yeah. We have like a, you know, like we feel like it's a part of the family's belonging and so on. So nonetheless, the idea was that I want to, encourage people to say, look, our Islam is beautiful. There is no contradiction between deen and dunya. Mm. You can indeed have dunya and deen, as we say, in Arafah, in Tawaf, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولْ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ You're allowed to, you should ask for, for Allah to give you hasana in dunya as well as hasana in the akhirah. Mm. And the, you know, uh, to ask for, Goodness and afu and afia in this dunya is in other hadith in du'as. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afu wa al-afiyat wa al-mu'afat al-daimit fi al-dini wa al-dunya wa al-akhirah. Allah says, "Qul man harrum zina Allah al-lati akhraj al-ibadi wa al-tayyibat min al-rizq. Qul hi al-ladina amnu fi al-hayat al-dunya khalisatin yom al-qiyama. Kadhalik nufusul al-ayat al-qomi yalamun." Why? How can you make haram that which Allah has made halal? You know, and this passion for before coming to the passion. Just from that perspective of trying to show to people that, that it is possible for you to have deen and dunya, I thought this clip is a good idea and it was received as such. And wallahi, I've seen the impact of it. I, young people around the country, I've been to many different cities, different parts, and they actually see like, wow, man, you know what? Mm. This, this, I want to be like that. Mm. I want to be a practicing Muslim who also <clears throat> has, you know, whatever, the material success, if you like. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you're fulfilling your zakat and your sadaqat and your heart is in the right place, and if you maintain that correct version of zuhud, which is to be to, to own the position and the position not to own you, then la ba'sabi, inshallah, it's okay. Yeah. Mm. I don't know if you want me to carry on, but you know, th this is this is the yeah, idea. Yeah, no, I, I, I think, yeah, I think you, you've, you, you, you've touched on the right points. Um, and it, it was, I guess it was interesting to see the reaction. And, and I think you clarified an important point, which is that the majority did receive it in a positive way. 100%. But such is social media that you're always going to get, uh, yeah, as they yeah, call yeah. it, a vocal minority um, that, you know, sometimes it's difficult to I could to probably count them. Like the people that mm. were negative, I, I can remember seeing their tweets and et cetera. There's probably about five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, yeah. But this this video on my Instagram page got 5.4 million. Mm. On my TikTok got about 2 million. On uh, our Elm feed, I don't know how many you guys got. But there are people, po they posted it in Arab countries, UAE, and yeah, Qatar. Yeah, got and reposted over and over. So yeah. millions, millions and millions of views across the platforms. From that, you just had a few negative mm. commentators mm. and that's expected. So let's let's come down to it because it seems like there are there, there is still kind of like an attitude, especially with imams, right? Uh, in particular imams, but we can go a bit more broader than that and just say someone who's kind of visibly practicing Muslim, right? that there's somehow a contradiction. Uh, you've touched on it already, a contradiction when it comes to acquiring wealth, being successful, you know, driving a nice car and all of these things. Um, whereas, it, you know, anyone else, like a random person who posted a TikTok, let's just say driving a nice car, you just scroll past it. Exactly. Right, you would yeah. bat an eyelid. But then, oh, an imam who's driving a nice car, hold on a second, that, that's a bit. See, that, you know, that, should, that goes to show that, why are you thinking like that? Whoever's mm -hmm. thinking like that, what's, why do you think that's a problem? Because it, you have, been engineered by the posts and the media that you've been consuming that owning a good asset like that or owning a nice thing like that should only be the right 
of a drug dealer or someone who's doing a, a particular type of uh, trade, which may not mm. even be Muslim, when it be Islamic and et cetera. So why do you think like that? They might ask me the question, why are you driving a nice car? I say, why do you think like that? What's the problem? Yeah. The Sahaba had amazing horses. They had khuyul. They had Sayyidina Sulaiman alayhi which Allah has mentioned about in so many places in the Quran. You know, he used to love horses. You know, فَطَفِقَ مَسْحًا بِالسُّوقِ وَالْأَعْنَاقِ and uh, ayat carry on in Surah Saba, and the Prophet used to used to have the the camel khaswa, mm. yeah, very you know that's his baraka mm-hmm. baraka of the Prophet وسلم, he was very strong very fast. Yeah, and the Sahaba used to take pride in how fast it was, and once it was defeated and it was sad, and oh, why did the Prophet so get defeated or beaten? You know, in that race, it's, it's, it's okay, it's okay, it's not a problem. So, it's it's a lack of knowledge, it's a lack of knowledge, a lack of understanding, and it's a it's it, a lot of the times it's assuming. The worst and having a negative opinion. These guys are practicing Muslim, so oh, guess what? He must have nicked the donation box and got himself a two hundred ten thousand pound mm. car. Mm. The donation box are not that big in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't even like that, and that's why yeah. I added into it that I do imam and, and I do business. Yeah. So don't assume that just an imam is going to be able to uh, just doing the imam job will allow for that. Maybe it will. Maybe in some mm. countries, some places, you know, it could be. But generally speaking, no. Okay, and uh, on that, because you mentioned imams, right? Do you think it's important generally? You know, of course, it's not everyone. Business is not everyone's cup of tea. That's that's yeah, one thing yeah. I've realized. There's a lot of people that I've met personally, even some of my family members that are like, as much as it it, it sounds appealing, I just never would be able to do it, right? Yeah. Um, there's some people that just cut out to to just work and be employed and just and they enjoy that. They prefer that. And there's others who are made. They have that as they call it, the business acumen, right? Yeah. They're made for it. They're creative and so on. Um, now, not all imams are going to want to go into business, but do you feel it is important? Because as an imam, uh, in particular, when you're an imam, you know, at, at a masjid and you're serving a community and you're full time there, um, uh, you know, it, it may be that, you know, like you said, we don't know what everyone's situation is, but it may be that um, the salary and things doesn't cover, no, right? No, it's it's not enough. In most cases. In most cases. It doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. Which which is a separate topic in and of itself, I guess, uh, which we can talk about. But but on this point here, do you think it's important for imams to yeah. look into other avenues of, of, of I income? Think, I think for Muslims to be financially capable, financially mm. independent, if possible, is required. It's even more so imams and those who are required and have a position and a responsibility to address. Why do you think that is uh, in particular because for imams? if you are not financially independent, then you you wouldn't have uh, the time, uh, the, uh, the the time and the ability or even the equipment sometimes, the access to books, which is expensive, mm. many other things, the ability to travel, to meet scholars, all of this kind of stuff has monetary aspects related to it. That's yeah. one. Having that financial support will enable you to upskill yourself. Having financial uh, independence or a financial ability will help you to serve the deen with a more of a sincere approach than just for a salary. You should be mm. sincere in all cases. But if someone's, for example, and I have I have friends, mashallah, alhamdulillah, one particular friend I think of, you know, he doesn't need to be an imam, but he does it because he volunteers. Initially, mm-hmm. it was a job, but then yeah. he got into business. <clears throat> mashallah, he's, he's really, really, mashallah, shot off and he's done, uh, you know, as in he's, he's, he's boosted, he's mm-hmm. kicked off in an amazing way. And now he does imam just to volunteer. Mm-hmm. So you can actually do stuff like that. You can actually serve the deen for free. Yeah, yeah. If you have a financial arrangement through trans, through business, through trade, and etc., yeah. of course, it has to be halal. It has to be yeah, clean. Yeah. I was going to say it. It reminds me of um, one of our teachers, a sheikh who you, you would know very well as well. But I'm not going to mention his name because mm. he mentioned this to us in private. Um, but he said that he, uh, one of the reasons why he wants to make money, right, and and to become financially independent, he says because I want to teach for free. Yeah. And uh, subhanallah, I found that to be such a, it's such a like simple, yeah. Uh, powerful niya to have, right? Because it's like, you know what, right now I'm relying on the salary that I'm earning for for teaching, but I want to get to a stage where I can just teach for free and everything else is taken care of. Fadillah, like I have, uh, you know, another aspect of what what I like and what I do is I teach Quran Mm. and I issue ijazat uh, sanad for students that read to me the entire Quran from cover to cover. And alhamdulillah, some of the top young Qurra of our community have read to me and I've helped them to develop Mm. their skills, their career and, you know, uh, to exp- uh, to bring them to exposure as well, and like 
you know, I'm not saying this uh, because they're not here, but I, I I charge them very nominal fees just for com- for commitment. Yeah. But for a similar kind of certification, there are people charging hundreds upon hundreds of pounds. Mm. Um, I, I don't, I, Alhamdulillah, because I can, I do. And mm. a lot of the times they may be giving me a small fee. Sometimes they may not. Sometimes they may forget. And I was like, Khalas, no problem. Yeah. And then it will be me paying for uh, the printing of the Senate and the mm. Ijaza and, you know, f- uh, food and exit. I'm happy about that. Alhamdulillah, I can do that. Because you're not particularly relying on exactly, that one. Yeah, exactly. So, so this is, this is uh, being able to teach for free or for a nominal <clears throat> price, which, you know, for some, because people want to, if they pay a little bit of money, it's committed. <laughs> so that's, that. that's, the old, <laughs> yeah. that's mainly the reason why I would require for someone to pay a small yeah. nominal fee, so that you're committed. Another thing is to speak the truth. Mm. You know, if, if, you're all, if you're just concerned about, am I going to have this job? Uh, if and your your job is your source of income only, then sometimes it will hinder you from speaking freely about that which is true, Very true and, yeah. and to address that which is wrong. Like in every place, there may be flaws and errors. Mm. But if you're thinking, oh, if I speak against this, then my job may be at risk. But that, that shouldn't be the case in the first place. But that would be an, an additional factor. Yeah. If if that's your only <clears throat> source of income. Mm. But mashallah, if you have a bit of financial independence, you can say, you know, with all due respect, this is wrong, mm. and you can address issues. Yeah. Uh, while you should also be willing to take feedback, you can also give feedback, mm. um, and you can have that uh, that that freedom, uh, you know, that positive freedom to say uh, to to address that which is and, and that's oppression, uh, whether it be nationally or internationally, politically, and so on. Whether it's in a community, in a masjid set, uh, set arrangement, whatever. Yeah. But it it gives you that that level of independence. To, to speak confidently and freely about that which you should be speaking about mm-hmm. as a person who represents Allah's deen in the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, I, I, I was speaking to someone a little while back and they were saying how uh, they, their perception of an imam <coughs> is someone who, uh, their perception of an imam is someone who is in the masjid like 24 seven, like all mm-hmm. day and night. And I said to them, SubhanAllah, like, you know, imams have families and, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, they have other, uh, commitments, other ambitions, and so on, right? So it's impossible, but unfortunately, sometimes it, it may be seen, uh, and it may be some that imams feel like that because again, because they're relying on that one thing, um, they feel like they 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 have to, you know, th- there's no other way. But like you said, if you kind of venture out and you look at other areas, then it can help you in different aspects of life, which I think is um, which I think is really important. Um, so so let's come back. So moving away from imams just for a second, and coming to just generally speaking, right? What what should a Muslim's relationship be with money and wealth? Because you might come across okay. verses in the Quran which tell you that yeah. you know amwal is fitna, right? So yeah. what, what what's our relationship with money? Yeah, um, I think we spoke briefly about that just a few minutes ago. But just before we move on from this topic, mm. I want to uh, mention uh, that I have utmost respect for imams who work on a low salary and mm. dedicate their entire life. And are in the masjid 24 mm. 7. There are imams that work day and night, and it may not be, you know, uh, what we're promoting in terms of in the terms of having mm. a, a balanced. But th- these imams sometimes, you know, they are willing to sacrifice the pleasures of this dunya only for the akhirah. And they have a different level that we can't so true. We can't contemplate. Mm. And if you look at those who established the madaris and the masajid in this country or across the world, even, they were people that were willing to live on, as you would say, peanuts. But again, with utmost respect, you know, those are the true legends. 100%, those are the yeah. true legends and I have immense respect for them. So our discussion about trying to balance entrepreneurship and imam is, is a general discussion. Yeah. But those who are able to, <clears throat> mashallah, focus on, 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 on just being an imam. And that's all they do for the sake of Allah. You are <laughs> ala ra'asina min folk. We have yeah, yeah. immense respect for Amazing. you and you are above us. And, and may Allah bless you and give you steadfastness. And yeah, I mean, you, I mean, that's uh, very true. Accept you. I mean, but coming back to the yeah. topic about having a relationship with money, I mean, at the end of the day, look, I, I think, and this is a known fact, that one of the amazing things about Islamic finance model, Islamic finance, it, it is its balance between mm. the greed of, say, for example, capitalism and et cetera, where anything goes as long as you can make a profit. Yeah. And, um, you know, in, in the systems of, for example, communistic systems where everything belongs to the state, you don't have a right to 
possess something of your personal, uh, something, uh, something that's personal. And in one of the modules that we're covering in Azhar actually, uh, you spoke about these differences and why Islam is the perfect balance. Because while it gives you the right to own possessions and acquire wealth without any limitations, but with conditions, at the same time, there is also uh, the demand that you must spend back on the community. So it's the perfect balance mm. uh, between uh, the two extremes, if you like. So Islam says, and, and Islamic teachings teach us that you are allowed, you are encouraged to, you are encouraged to go out there and make money. Mm. Allah says in the Quran, فَإِذَا قُضِيَتِ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ when the Salah of Jum'ah is finished, فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Scatter out throughout the world. وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ And seek from the fadl, generosity, sustenance of Allah. Mm. Allah is literally commanding it here. And then it says, وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا And continue to remember Allah throughout your day, throughout your life, throughout your transaction, throughout everything. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So that you may attain success through dhikr, but also the beginning part of the ayah, mm. which is to fulfill that commandment of seeking sustenance. Yeah. And seeking sustenance is commanded mm. in the Quran. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has said that the most blessed of income is the income that is acquired by the work of a person by their own hand mm. and kul, kul bay'a mabrur, every uh, transparent, clear transaction, mm. you know. Um, and then another hadith teaches that, that al bayani bil khiyar, that the two people in a transaction are, they have a choice of acceptance or reject, rejecting so long as they are in the discussion. And when, if they are both honest to one another and they describe their product as it ought to be and they, the other person pays the price as he, as he or she should do, then Allah will give them barakah in that income mm. for both parties, for the product that they buy and for the price that they take. So this Quranic ayah, these ahadith are encouraging us toward trading, transaction towards business. Allah says in Surah Al-Muzzamil that uh, وَآخَرُونَ يَضْرِبُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ يَبْتَغُونَ مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ You know, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and everyone should say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whenever the Prophet Sallallahu name is mentioned. He, Allah is telling the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be conscious of in his jama'ah those who are following him in salah that there could be among them those who are um, uh, it, he, he mentions certain people that are struggling the path of Allah, maybe unwell and etc. But also those who are out there trading mm. uh, on business trips. Uh, those who are seeking the sustenance mm. of Allah. So the Prophet is being told to take into consideration the fact that there are those who have needs in his jama'ah. Among them he lists also those who are businessmen. Mm. So that goes to show that being a businessman in Islam is... Is, is an elevated position. It's a respectful position. And that's exemplified by the best of people, like our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu who was a businessman himself. Mm. Like his closest of companions, like Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu arda, Sayyidina Umar al-Muqattab radiallahu anhu arda, Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu arda. Uh, all of them, they had aspects of entrepreneurship, you know, um, working as well, as well as struggling for the sake of Allah. Uh, being uh, students of knowledge, being teachers, being uh, faqih, being mufassir, mm. they, 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 they were the culmination of all of those amazing, amazing, beautiful qualities. And then others around him as well, like for example, Sayyidina Abdurrahman ibn Awf, Khadija radiallahu anha wa ardaha, she was a businesswoman, mm. yeah. she funded the Prophet mm. da'wah, uh, before the Prophet uh, had the support of other sahaba. Mm. So Islam has no problem with money whatsoever. In fact, we believe al-malu malullah, property and wealth is Allah's property and wealth. And we acquire it in the halal way. Uh, and if you acquire it in the halal way, from a halal source of income, in the halal method, then this is your haq. Mm. This is your haq. And thereafter it being your haq, Islam, Allah, has stipulated certain rights that he demands. For example, zakat and the sadaqah and etc. Sadaqah uh, al-fitr, zakat. And even giving ex, you know optional sadaqah. Mm. Sometimes that could be a <clears throat> kifaya, a communal obligation because of an excessive need for a particular a nation or a particular place, right? Mm. So when you've done these, uh, fulfilled these conditions, which is of acquiring in a halal way, a halal method, a halal uh, uh, you know product, uh, commodity with halal income, and then spent it also 
in the way that Allah Azza wa Jalla wants you to spend it, mm. then you are clean, squeaky clean. Alhamdulillah, this is your haq. And as you know, from the from the uh, from the uh, the 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 main objectives of our religion is hifzul mal. Mm. There are five primary objectives of our religion. Five, and you know, this is a this is according to many ulama. Uh, you could uh, one of them is protecting a person's wealth, and so protecting and developing wealth is from the primary objectives of Islam. <clears throat> yeah, I mean that is a big that goes to, that that tells us a lot about Islam's relationship mm. and Muslim's relationship with property. Yeah, uh, and we could talk a lot more, but ultimately, you know, Alhamdulillah, this is the beauty of our religion. It's perfectly balanced. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا it's the perfect middle nation where Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, ما فرطنا في الكتاب I means everything is recorded and mentioned and indicated towards in the book. Uh, and Alhamdulillah for the ni'mah of Islam, which has told us that we can indeed have a balanced life between the two extremes of just greed and greed and greed and acquiring without any rules and regulation yeah. or not having any property whatsoever. Mm. In Islam, you're allowed to own property in a halal way, but also spend it. In the way that Allah Azza has told you to spend it. Apart mm. from that, it's yours. Enjoy. Yeah. And it's, it's it's amazing because subhanAllah, like a lot of people out there who are chasing, you know, chasing wealth, chasing money, the objective of making money is just making money. Like that is the end goal for them. Like when I get a million, I want to hit, you know, tens of millions. I want to hit a billion. That's that's the that's the game, that's the goal for them. Whereas as Muslims, it's like the amount is is good, alhamdulillah, if you, if you make it, but that's not the end goal. The end goal is, you mentioned so many other things, in between acquiring it, spending, being charitable, giving back, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's not the end goal. And that, that's actually why a lot of people, subhanAllah, in the world that, we, that we're living in today, when they do, and th these are, you know, mainly we're talking about people who don't have a sense of religion and that purpose, that when they do reach the million, when they do reach the, the, that, that a certain amount of wealth, it doesn't, it's not fulfilling because yeah. they still feel empty because obviously uh, we know that there's more to life than just making that money. Money is a means to an end. Mm. It's not the end goal mm. itself. You know, yeah. Money is a, is a commodity in and of itself, if you can, if I can, if I can call it that. But the whole point of money is supposed to be in circulation. It's supposed to be uh, benefiting others. It's supposed to acquire other things. Mm. So uh, we don't, a person shouldn't be seeking money for money. A person should be seeking money because of the benefits it brings, uh, and these benefits we've listed, yeah. of being financially independent, of having more time for your family, of being able to spend upon your family, of being able to be of khidmah and service to to Muslims and to people and to humanity and to the to society, to the environment. You yeah. know, all of this is important in our religion. And our, there was a quote, you know, uh, a man said that you can't help the poor by being one of them. Mm. <laughs> if you want to help the poor, yeah. you have to be rich. Yeah. So may Allah make everyone or may Allah make us all, you know, and grant us all that wealth through which we will become closer to Allah. I mean, and not that wealth which will take us away from Allah because that's the meaning of إِنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ فِتْنَةً It mm. is a test. Some, some may become distanced. And this is a lot of the times it happens. People forget Allah. Because of having wealth. Yes, yeah. Because they're so comfortable. So, they're so much, they're so comfortable. They feel as though I don't need to make dua because what do I need? I've got yeah, everything. Yeah, I've got everything here. Yeah. And, and this is a big fit now. Mm. We need to be wary of that. Yeah. We need to be wary of that. And that's why the person who has the wealth owns the wealth, but the wealth doesn't own them. And they are yeah. still able to remember Allah. And that's why Allah Azza wa Jalla has praised Sayyidina Sulaiman and his father Dawood alayhi salatu salam in the Quran. Qala, he said, Rabbi awzi'ni. And Ashkura Ni'mata Kalati and Amta Aliya Wala Walidi. Oh Allah, give me the ability to be thankful for the ni'mah that you have given to me and to my father. Mm -hmm. This is a dua that you know entrepreneurs should be making regularly. <laughs> yeah. And be thankful to Allah and fulfill Allah's rights and the rights of the community with that. Yeah. I want to come back to something you mentioning about halal uh, income. Uh, talking a little bit about the haram side because, uh, and I'll tell you why, because in within the Muslim community in particular, um, and of course as an imam, it's important to address certain things. And there might be certain um, trends that people follow and particularly in our communities. For example, you have um, in, involvement with alcohol, especially when it comes to restaurants uh, and so on, right? Involvement with alcohol and things. Um, a lot of people don't, you know, they, they've been doing it for years. And unfortunately, sometimes it's, uh, our elders may be getting caught, caught up in these things, right? And um, whether it's alcohol for some, I think for the young, for, for the younger generation, it might not be alcohol, but it might be riba, 
interest getting caught up in this, right? So um, we've spoken a little bit about halal income, but what's what's the Im- importance of that, and what 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 effect does having obviously haram is haram at the end of the day? Mm-hmm. We know that mm-hmm. we steer away from it because it's disobedience to Allah. But what further implications and effects can having haram sustenance and income have on a person in their life? It's absolutely, you know, uh, fundamental that a person, uh, you know, there is uh, the hadith that says طلب العلم فريض على كل مسلم that seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every single Muslim. Yeah. And the meaning of that hadith is that the amount of knowledge that you require to be able to practice your daily life while being a Muslim, for you that amount is fard. So if someone is not a businessman, they don't have to know all the masail of transactions and trading. Mm. But if you want to become a business person, if you want to acquire wealth, if you want to uh, do trading, etc., then you have to know the rules and regulations. Right. Otherwise, you are not being, you would not be able to <clears throat> do it according to how Allah Azza wa Jalla has commanded it in the Quran and the Sunnah and etc. So, therefore, one of the key things that you'd learn in any, you know, kitab of of buyur, a chapter of of trading and transactions in a business, is things that you should, uh, you must avoid. Of them is uh, that which uh, the mal that you can trade is called malun mutaqawwam. That is something that has got value mm. according to our religion. So things that w- w- things which are not mal mutaqawwam is not an upright asset, if you like. Things like alcohol, mm. things like you know pork meat, uh, meat that's not misled in the correct way, and so on. There are other examples. You must avoid these because first of all, you've committed a major sin, a significant, a major sin by engaging in that transaction. And the money that you've acquired through that is haram. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> the food that you buy with it is therefore also by extension also haram. Mm. And there's a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu that says a person is extending their hand in dua to Allah. Yeah. Saying, Ya Rab, Ya Rab, Oh Allah, Oh Allah. And his, his, you know, his income is haram and his food is haram and this is haram. And it's the, and and How is Allah going to answer that person? Allah says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ if my servant asks about me, then I'm very close. I'm willing to understand uh, to answer your du'as. I will answer your du'as. Answer me first. Mm. And answering Allah means to follow and abide by his halal and his haram. And that which is forbidden to stay away from it. And it's absolutely fundamental that you educate yourself as to what is halal and haram so that you can do and avoid. I went to a restaurant recently. A brother invited me very generously and kindly just before Ramadan. Can you come to my restaurant? It's a nice place. I said, okay, khalas, I wanted my family. Mm-hmm. And once I arrived, I saw that he was, he had a full, you know, had a full section for alcohol. Mm-hmm. And I said to him, you should, have, you should stop this. Yeah. He said to me, why? So, well, the, the point is that he had no idea what's wrong with it. I had mm. to explain to him why it's Didn't not allowed for him, to, for, for him to sell alcohol. And obviously, he probably knew, but he probably forgot. So I said, this is haram. Even if you're selling it to non-Muslim, it's still haram for you to sell. Mm. Because, you know, especially khamar and alcohol, it's got very strict rules. The, the carrier of it, the, the seller of yeah. it, the buyer of it, the facilitator of it, the pourer of it. Everyone is sinful. Mm. And, and it's haram for everybody to be involved in any way, shape or form. So I would say that as a Muslim, if you really want barakah, blessings of Allah, if you want to be successful, um, then, you know, we first of all agree and admit and confess that Allah is the owner of all affairs. Yeah. Allah is the sustainer. Allah is the maintainer. And if you want Allah to grant you and bless you, then you must seek it from Him. And a, pre, a, a key requisite of seeking it from him is to abide by his rules and regulations. Mm. And in order to abide by his rules and regulations, you must know his rules and regulations. So therefore, beloved brother or sister who is willing to or wants to become a business person, wants to make money, wants to do trading, wants to do this and that, stocks, etc. Whatever you're going to do, right? Crypto, find out and educate yourself. Learn and acquire knowledge on the rules and regulations of, of this field that you want to, that you want to be involved in. So that Allah will bless you and so mm. that you can avoid haram, uh, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Uh, on the topic of um, alcohol, actually, just recently on Twitter, I saw someone, uh, there's a Muslim owned company, they're sharing this, mashallah, nice bottle uh, with a cork and everything, right? It's basically this uh, Muslim version of alcohol. It's alcohol free, but they've started a business about it. I, I, I see this and I'm just like, even if it doesn't contain alcohol, what is this obsession? with trying to imitate you know what i mean like you want to sit there and pop a bottle 
because you want to feel like it feels like you're missing out on something. Again, this this for me is just uh, I find it quite amusing because it's like yeah. the way the way actually the way I see it, and this is a reality. It's not just the way I see it. This is a reality. The reality is that the majority of things out there are halal, actually. Yes. By you know by default. By default. Yeah. Right. I know when it comes to food, we're more strict, but an ibadah. If you think, yeah. yeah. If, if you yeah. think if you think about it, majority of drinks, beverages, juices, etc., out there, they're halal. It's just the the alcohol, the wines, etc. Right. Same thing with food. Actually, most meats and things, if you slaughter it in the right way, it's halal. There's only like one or two things if you think about there it. Are are haram. Things, yeah. So I just I just sit there and think, Alhamdulillah, like there's so much that is halal. There's so much that's permissible for us. Why do we then need to like try and find some kind of loophole to feel like you know where? Well, Allah Shabir, I think this connects back to one of the points that I made earlier on, mm. and that is that we have to be proud of being a Muslim. Yeah. Like. You know, our, our our religion is so beautiful. Mm. Our Quran is so beautiful. Our Allah is, you know, Allah is Allah. You know, Allah is the greatest. Mm. Allahu Akbar, you know, Allah is the greatest. And so we have to be proud of that. Yeah. And and there is so much in our religion, in our tradition, in our culture to be proud of. Instead of popping a bottle, learn how to pour the Moroccan tea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like in that, in that sense, I mean, yeah. no, I don't want to make a, a legal hukum or hukum shari on what it is, what, yeah. what does it, you know, what does it, what, what is the hukum and the ruling of someone um, copying mm -hmm. such an action and etc. But what I'm saying is, it comes from a a place of feeling, perhaps you know, a bit of uh, inferior, almost. inferior yeah, to yeah. complex. Yeah, like I have to copy that in order mm. to feel like uh, to feel like I'm having fun. Uh, cheers, mm. tapping the yeah, glass. Yeah, yeah. Even even sometimes having the you know those glasses with the thin yeah, yeah, thin yeah. one leg. With the base, people find it because you know usually they use for alcohol like champagne and etc. Yeah. So it looks. So, at the end of the day, in normal amal actions are based upon intentions. If someone generally found that you know looks nice, I want to take it from us. Labas, you know, but if it is from a place of feeling inferior, and I have to copy mm. uh, that culture in order to feel like uh, I'm having fun and so on, then we should really, you know, look at ourselves in the mirror and say, why am I not proud of my Muslim culture? Exactly. You know, there is so much beauty in our Muslim tradition. Eating with your hands. Some people find that, you know, they they find that, uh, you know, they would frown upon it or they would mm. look. They would think this is not stylish enough. This is not modern enough. But again, this is the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there are so many, so many health benefits to it. Yeah. And soon you'll find probably uh, doctors also promoting eat with your hand, just like they're promoting miswak now. Mm. You know, uh, yeah. the tooth stick. It's so many health herbal toothbrush. Yeah. It's all going to come around You will see the benefits Of these <laughs> exactly. things slowly So yeah. be proud of being Who you are Be proud Of being a servant of Allah Be proud of Like proud in the sense of Alhamdulillah proud Not yeah. proud of like You know uh, Arrogant Yeah Be proud that Allah Has given you the ability To know him He made you a human being To, to be able to recognize him To be able to prostrate to him There is nothing greater than that mm. The greatest pr pride Of a Muslim of, of, of Abd Is that Allah is their Lord And they are and we are servants of our creator. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. We're not servants of a particular idol, servants of a particular singer or a, some sort of, you know, the pop idols that you have. Yeah, yeah. Or idol or these are the shahwa, the desires. Mm. And we're not servants of our desires, inshallah. We're servants of Allah. Well, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, we were talking about nice clothing earlier on, mashallah. I like your side note. I like your bisht, mashallah. I like your little scarves, <laughs> mashallah. It's so mashallah. Shouted, alhamdulillah. It's, uh, obviously, it, this hit the headlines not long ago with. Uh, the World Cup in uh, Qatar oh, yeah, and uh, yeah, Messi yeah. wearing wearing his one, yeah. and uh, it brought, actually brought a lot of uh, attention to it. I think it did, isn't it? Like and I'm not. I'm, I mean, I can't, I'm not going to hide it. I probably. I, I think maybe my choice of this color was because of really that gift oh, that yeah, yeah. you know the, uh, Messi was given by the Amir of Qatar. Yeah, yeah. I I, I did wear bishts before. Yeah. But recently, my my father and my mother they went to Umrah, and I requested if they could get one, like a good quality one sure. from a shop in Medina. And this is supposedly pretty good quality. Yeah, yeah. It's about 150 pounds or something. It's quite expensive, you know. Yeah. Um, And so, alhamdulillah, I wear it sometimes. And summer especially, it's nice because it's light. True, yeah. Last time I was wearing the Azhari coat, mm. which is very nice for winter and cold season. Yeah. But for, for the summery kind of warm seasons, this is nice. This is a nice... Uh, Overgarment, which was comfortable, yeah, yeah, yeah. looks nice, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know. Alhamdulillah, exactly. we're, allowed to, we're allowed to look nice. Allah says, "Ya bani Adam, khudu zina tikum." Indi kulli mashid, look good for the sake of Allah. Mm, absolutely, yeah. Um, 
I was going to go into another topic. I'm not going to go into it because you meant, I mentioned Messi now. And I'm thinking of all these football players going to Saudi for <laughs> the money that's being thrown around now there. Yeah. But uh, we'll leave that for another time. I'm not really a football uh, guy, so I'll probably not, not be able to see Okay. But well. I was talking about clothing. Hold on, I'm going to show you something. Okay. So this is... Uh, oh, is this the mystery box? This is the we, mystery uh, box. So last time I was wearing this on my head. Um, but the f- funny story, I was carrying it to the messages one day. And someone goes, what is this? Is this someone's bag? So yeah, this is... Uh, this is do you want to lift it up slightly just in case the camera is um, not, not, not getting it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is inside the box is my Azhari hat. Those of you who aren't watching and, and you're listening, then uh, Sheikh has a mystery box and he's opening it and... It's, it's actually an Azhari hat box. <laughs> It's just, so this, it, has, it has its own dedicated box. I mean, you don't have to have it, but it's good to you carry. Get, and because so. I was, I had in the luggage for a yeah, flight yeah. and stuff. It doesn't cost that much, you know. Uh, it's about it's about ten pound less, less than that. By mm. that. But anyway, this hat is iconic, and this hat has a lot of history. This hat is is a part of clothing, and this is the heritage of an Azhari mm. uh, alim. You know, it's it's the kind of it's a tarbush, the fez hat that uh, Azhari alim would wear. A student would For wear. those who aren't aware, what what is Azhari? If you can, so Azhari is uh, Jamia al Asad Sharif is is a university in Egypt, which was uh, started before Salahuddin Ayyubi, but then he came and sort of uh, introduced the Sunni syllabus into it, in which all the four schools of law yep. were from the onset being taught, and that is that is one of the iconic features of Azhar University is that in it all four schools of law are taught, mm. with you know as it should be taught, yeah, because sometimes. Some students of knowledge would assume that I studied the other schools of law, but they actually studied it as a uh, as a as a mention and a reference in their books from their madhab. Like a refutation. Exactly. Because I'm in Hidayah, you know, yeah, yeah. Shafi'i. Yeah, yeah. So you, you studying a Waqal Shafi'i is not you studying the Shafi'i yeah, madhab yeah, yeah, at yeah. all. Yeah. Because he is saying in a way that, you know. So in Azhar, they have dedicated kulliyas and faculties in which uh, the four schools of law will be taught. Um, so, for example, in Kulliyat Sharia, in the Faculty of Sharia in Islamic Law, you'd have all four schools of law being taught. And when you sign up, when you finish your college, yes, and and now you are about to enroll for university, you choose your madhab. Mm. So, if you if you prefer to study the Hanafi school of law, you choose. So, is it like uh, Harry Potter? You got the Gryffindors, and the, well, no, I'm uh, joking. <laughs> <laughs> you get, do you get chosen, or do you choose the madhab? No, no, no that's not that bad. <laughs> you don't use that example. <laughs> Subhanallah. Uh, so, you choose the madhab. Yeah. You choose the madhab and, and then based upon that, your sort of syllabus that you study for the Islamic, uh, for that for that curriculum would be mm. would be laid out or you'd follow that. So Ansar University has got loads of faculties. You can study medicine in it. You can study agriculture. Yeah, you medicine study, as well. Yeah, really? You can study oh, wow. uh, pharmacy. You can study uh, engineering. You can study all of this stuff. Oh, wow. But every single Azhari would be a hafiz of the Quran. Mashallah. Would know tafsir of the Quran would know hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These are basic subjects that mm. are to be learned in all kulliyas. Right. So I was just showing that because, you know, we're talking about uh, clothing, but this is a piece of clothing that I was wearing last time, which is that Tarbush Azhar. Yeah. And I said, yeah, I thought I'm wearing the white hat because, you know, it's a hot day. It's a bit more comfortable to wear, but I just brought it with with me just to show it to you guys. <laughs> nice, alhamdulillah. Um, just before, 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 we, before we wrap up, I want to just uh, talk a little bit about of course, mashallah, you mentioned you're, you're still serving, alhamdulillah, Darul Ummah yeah. uh, as an imam. And um, I'm sure, you know, uh, since we spoke four years ago last, mm-hmm. you know, you've gained more experience. Oh, yeah. uh, the world, I, I feel like, subhanAllah, especially post-COVID, the world has just it's changed a lot in just the last few years. You know what I mean? Like uh, from every standpoint almost. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm sure you've, you've had a lot more interesting experiences and... Uh, you know, you've spoken to a lot of people. What would you say? I mean, would you say that trend-wise in terms of, I think we, we touched on it last time as well, but in terms of what a lot of youngsters or the community as a whole, you know, certain types of issues that they're coming with, that they're facing, that they're uh, inquiring uh, about, um, would you say that there's anything that's drastically changed or anything that's now becoming a lot more common that they're coming to you with? Um, I think th- there are... The case is that you do, I mean, as an imam, your your role is, uh, you know, very multi-purpose. You, you do uh, yeah. a bunch of different stuff, uh, leading the prayers, teaching lessons, delivering the Jum'ah, ah, advising, you know, uh, guidance, uh, Q and A's, all mm. that kind of stuff is all involved. And, you know, the questions vary. Uh, a lot of the times it's family yeah. related issues, uh, sometimes it's to do with addiction, sometimes it's to do with, 
uh, is to do with a lot of the times to do with marriage. Mm. I was going to say probably, yeah, a huge probably is going to be that. amount, huge percentage of it is marriage. Mm. You know, marriage is like. And when we biggest, say marriage, it's it's more not, it's not before marriage. It's more marital yeah, like conflict and uh, discord. The nikah, but there's yeah. also a lot of requests of you know mediating. Yeah. I have my, you know problem with the wife, problem with the husband, that kind of stuff. Um, there's also cases of agnosticism, atheism. Mm. Uh, I had one young man who basically, quite frankly, said that he doesn't see a. A reason to believe and so I tried my best you know I even took him to people that are more experienced in the field of da'wah and and, and, and debating and etc and I think I think you know he we try to help in the best way that we can but ultimately maybe uh, an increase in you know mental health issues or people mm. feeling sad depressed lonely uh, loss, loss of loved ones and etc post COVID maybe that's more of a theme now mm. uh, and of course now we're going through the cost of living crisis that a lot of people are actually um, not that I've been approached uh, to give solutions for but this is I know it's an ongoing issue yeah. and a lot of people are struggling with that so the, the cases and the issues that you deal with they do really vary um, but I, th- I, I my, my what I would take from that is that it's so important that more imams and scholars and communities are available for the community mm. to answer questions yeah. and to listen to them and to hear them out and to guide them. You know, we can complain and moan all we want saying, oh, people don't, they're straight away from the deen and they're not really practicing. But if you are not there in their life, if you're not giving solutions for them, if you're not guiding them, then we're first to blame because mm. we have a responsibility of conveying. Mm. Can I ask you a personal question? Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people, they come with problems, whether it's marriage related, financial, mental health, etc. Does it take a toll on you as as an imam? Like, you know, hearing so many, sometimes it's quite negative and then you're dealing, you're having to deal with it and you're sometimes you're having to take it home as well and yeah. think and, and be in contact. Does it, does it take a toll? I think it's really important to look after your own mental health first before you try to help others. Mm. And... I do take it in doses in the sense that I if uh, I would pace myself sometimes. Um, uh, so that's one aspect of it. Another, another, another aspect of it is, another aspect of it is, you know, I, I, as a community person, a community leader, if you like, you really do need to have that sabr and, and, and the, the, the helm, you know, that, yeah. the forbearance and the patience and the ability to deal with a, a bunch of different people with different mindsets. Even wallahi today, Adhur Salah, I can't even quote what the guy was saying. An elderly uncle mm. was saying to another elderly uncle that I did not come here to this masjid to, you know, uh, to do this. And he said a very crass word. Okay. And I was like, he was behaving like a child. I literally gave him a, like a look to say, what kind of behavior is this? So about different people, or different mindsets, different problems, different issues. In Ramadan, we had an elderly uncle. I shouldn't say it. But there was an actual really bad situation. Mm. They got into physical contact. Mm. This is in Ramadan. So like people are suffering with different issues. Yeah. Um, so you you try to help in the best way possible. But it's absolutely important that you also look after your, first and foremost, look after your own mental health and your physical health and et cetera, which I'm trying. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying as well for the physical, physical health. But mental health is very important that you look after yourself first. Um, while also trying to help others, inshallah. Final thing, um, again, uh, tying in with the role of an imam, and mashallah, I, I do sometimes keep up to date with um, the khutbas being yeah. uploaded on YouTube and things. Yeah. But on, on khutbas, um, because I, I think for me personally, the khutbah is such a unique opportunity, yeah. the weekly uh, address to the community where probably obviously as an imam, you would know that that's, that's the time where the masjid is going to be most packed yes. compared to any other yes. time of the year, right, yeah. bar Ramadan. So, um, yeah, h- how important is it as an imam to capitalize on that khutbah and make the khutbahs more relevant, engaging, and also, of course, in the language uh, of the people? Yeah, it's absolutely important. I, I mean, to be honest, I think that is the most important ac- action mm. and activity that you do as an imam in the whole week. Whereas you're dealing with individual cases, individual cases, now you are addressing a, a crowd of a thousand, fifteen hundred, yeah. or more or less people. But this is a huge opportunity where you have 15, 20 minutes to give them the best of what mm. you can offer in that week from all of that knowledge that you have. And it's so absolutely important that you 
convey that to them in the best way that you can, with the best research that you can put together, in the best of language, the best of delivery. You must train yourself. You must, mm. you know, upskill yourself. In, in because this is, uh, this is the best opportunity, like you said, to convey and to give that da'wah and to deliver that Islam, Islamic message, and, and to teach people about the Quran and the Sunnah and the and the and the Sahaba and the Salaf and the Tabi'een and the Ulama and the Mujtahideen. Yes, of course, we know that in certain masajid. Um, the, the, the khutbah is in English or in the language of uh, uh, the people But in other masjids they have uh, the a Arabic tree. khutbah But then they have the bayan mm. before it In either case whatever you, Whether it is within the khutbah or just pre the khutbah We must make as imams uh, you know, Our best effort to try and, and make that count mm. Because like you said This is the best opportunity you'll have in the whole week yeah, with all these people in front of you, so you know we've got to pull our socks up and try our best to to really you know, and not just preparing physically, as in with the information and data, but also I think in preparing ourselves spiritually. Mm. It's so important because I, you know I haven't been around for that long, but from from the years of whatever giving khutbas and lectures and whatever, you will see yourself as different when you are more spiritually connected. Mm. You will see the impact and the flow of that different. Very true, yeah. So, like they say, you know, ما خرج من القلب وصل إلى القلب. Mm. Whatever comes from the heart reaches the heart. So we have to prepare ourselves spiritually, mentally, of course, physically as well. You know, with the information and data, with research, language and style and and prose and all of that stuff. You use all the you know, because Allah says, "Udhu ila sabil Rabbi kabil hikmati wal mawghati al hasana." You invite towards the way of Allah with hikmah, with wisdom, and mawghati al hasana. Beautiful speech. Yeah. وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنًا Say mm. good, speak well. And this is one of the key features of communi- of, of being a da'i, having excellent communication skills. Yeah. And the Prophet ﷺ had excellent communication so, skills. And Umm Ma'bad uh, 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 describes him as the person who when he spoke, it was like his speech was connected like a bead, mm. like, a, like, a, like, a, like a string with beads around it, that every word and phrase and sentence was connected deeply, coherent, Beautiful, yeah. you know, not too long, not too short. All of these amazing teachings from the Prophet's uh, Sunnah and his teachings, we must try to apply so that we can deliver a good address, a sermon, a khutbah, a bayan for yeah. our <clears throat> communities and our crowds on yeah. that Jummah, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. I think it's it's really important to, you know, uh, everything you mentioned there is really important, but I think the key word is also re- making it relevant because yes. sometimes oh, you yes. can you can just have a generic topic that you've yeah. probably discussed it's been discussed before you can discuss at any time you know you can talk yeah, about anything, but it's you know especially you might tie it in with a, a, an event that's just happened yes, or something 100%. within the community or a problem that you've seen prevailing that's Absolutely also really important, important isn't it i mean i don't understand imams that talk about random uh, not random like sort of you know distant Is, like issues that have no relevance to the time at the time. Like, mm. Right now, we're living in a time where there are so many issues that need to be discussed. Yeah, from atheism to liberalism to agnosticism to you know uh, this ism and that ism and the transgender wars and etc. All this mm. kind of stuff. People's faith is literally being questioned. And like you mentioned, the marital issues and yeah, relationships yeah, so, and all of these know, things, right? Yeah. So all of this stuff. There's so much to speak about. How does a person avoid all of that and decide to speak about? Um, an issue that's, that has no relevance Maybe just a story of the past Which will I don't know Maybe may bring some spiritual benefit But would not be addressing Head on issues That we actually face Yeah And then you've got Social media Of course Which is uh, Another <laughs> Great tool Which yeah. can be Which can be used And I think it's, it's I, I think You know for me uh, I'm glad to see More uh, Imams And shuyukh Like yourself Mashallah You know <laughs> Utilizing it I never had more. You know Social media <laughs> Until the age of 30 Mashallah. Wallah, I never. I had like long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I had uh, Facebook. Yeah. Karma, but then I, I deleted everything. And then I was like studying whatever. I came back uh, when I was th- when I in 2019, end of 2019, we had this really big event in Amashid uh, Daruluma called the yeah. Winter Conference or Youth Conference, and we had a lot of dais coming. Mm. And some of these brothers that attend, they said, "You, you need to." Be more active on social yeah, media yeah. Because you could do good You could reach more And my wife and my younger Brother as well They were both sort of Really adamant that I, I was like What's the point You know <laughs> If people hear They hear If someone sends They send they're like, No no you have to do it And so With their advice And their blessings And their suggestion And their push I decided to open uh, Instagram 
Um, and then eventually uh, TikTok as well, Twitter, yeah. Facebook, Twi- YouTube I had from a long time. Because yeah, you know, yeah. even when I was in Egypt, when I was studying, I used to upload the recitations and stuff mm. sometimes. Um, but it's been good, Alhamdulillah. A lot of people seem to have found it beneficial. Um, I mean, you, you don't have to use social media, but if you feel like you can and you want to, and you can keep your intention sincere and pure and avoid fitting out because there is a lot of people that fall prey to fitting out on social media, on Instagram, yeah, um, <clears throat> and so on. If you feel like you can and you're able to and you want to, while avoiding fitna, do a good khidma, do be of service, do da'wah, then go for it, you know, but always check yourself. Yeah. Always check your intention. Always have um, someone even monitoring your page. It's really important. And you might be thinking, What's it, what am I talking about? But it's important. Because when you have that privacy and access to this world of fitna, yeah. it's very important that you do muhasaba of yourself. Mm. It's very important. Very true. Yeah. May Allah give us tawfiq and steadfastness. I mean, you I know. Mean. Uh, You're doing great, you know. Inshallah, I wanted to ask you questions, but that's not the time for it. Because, mashallah, you're active. You've been active on social media for -hmm. longer than me, I think. Then you're a TV person, you're writing. So maybe uh, Ilmfid should have uh, an opinion where he's interviewed (laughs) because you have a lot to offer as well, mashallah. Tabarakallah. It's good. Allah bless you, Sheikh. It's been a a pleasure. Um, As always, thank you for joining us again. And we discussed some important topics. Marfim, inshallah Marfim. may not be the last time and i know we barely see each other these days so <laughs> you know inshallah we'll see you catch catch up again probably soon yeah uh, i just want to say at the end of it khairan to Shabir Hassan for um, hosting today as well as Ayun Feed for um facilitating this and everyone else all the brothers here uh, the video team the editing team mashallah with their nice kit oh, the kit out mashallah wow this gear <laughs> i was just looking at it it's massive so i hope the quality is good inshallah and you guys appreciate all the hard work they're putting in home feed mashallah <clears throat> he's been serving for a long time and doing great work alhamdulillah positivity for the community alhamdulillah and Allah accept all of us and forgive yeah, our man. shortcomings and our mistakes and keep us all steadfast and sincere in our intentions i want to say that um anything problematic any mistakes any errors anything negative anything bad i've said is my own fault from myself and shaitan may allah forgive me and also please forgive me and excuse me if i've offended you in any way but ultimately uh anything good is from allah azza wa jal thank you so much Sheikh.